What happens when Paul stands before King Agrippa? That's what we're going to find out next in Acts 26. Agrippa comes out strong and says, you know what, Paul? You have permission to speak for yourself. It says that Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I think it means he's gesticulating, which they tell you in Toastmasters to do. So he says, I'm fortunate I get a chance to talk to you and make my defense against all these accusations because you know about all our customs and these controversies. So I hope you're going to listen to me. I think this is a great start and appealing to Agrippa to have some fairness in this situation. And he explains that, you know, from his youth, he was among his own nation. And in Jerusalem, he was known by all the Jews and known for a long time. They know who I am. And I was, you know, part of the strictest party. I lived as a Pharisee. And now I'm on trial because my hope in the promise of God in the resurrection of our 12 tribes that we were going to be resurrected from the dead. And that's what happened to Jesus of Nazareth. I was convinced to do all these things against Jesus. And I locked up many Christians while I was a Pharisee, while I was actively bringing them in and trying to get them to commit blasphemy against Jesus because it just raged inside of me, this fury. I persecuted them all the way to foreign cities. But then he tells the whole story about the road to Damascus and how he was going there to haul people back. And then God spoke to him and opened up his eyes and that he was going to go to Gentiles and open their eyes and, and try to change them from the power of Satan to the power of God, that their sins could be forgiven too. So King Agrippa, I'm not being disobedient to this heavenly vision that I had, but instead I went to the area of Judea and also to the land of the Gentiles. And I told people to repent and to turn to God. This is the same God we both believe in. And for that reason, they hate me. They tried to kill me. And even to this day, I've had help come from God. So I can stand here and testify to little people, to big people, and talk about the prophets, Moses, all the things that were supposed to happen. And that Christ is the suffering servant. You know, he's going to be the first one raised from the dead and proclaimed to our people and to the Gentiles. You know, he's appealing to what Agrippa would know about his own faith. And so then it was funny. Festus at this point says in a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning has driven you out of your mind. This has just tied you up. And Paul says, I am not out of my mind. Most excellent Festus, I am speaking the truth and rational words. These things really happen. And the king knows this. He, he's my faith. He understands what was supposed to happen. And I spoke boldly about it. And I'm persuaded that none of these things have escaped his notice. And, and then he goes to ask King Agrippa, do you believe in the prophets? I know you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul says, you know, whether it's long or short, that everyone who hears me today might become like I am, ex except for these chains. The, the chains kind of stink. So the king rose up and the governor and Bernice, who are all sitting there. And when they withdraw, they said, this man's not doing anything worth deserving death or imprisonment. And so Agrippa said to Festus, you know what? I probably could have set him free right now, but he appealed to go to Caesar. So it's not my call anymore. Oh, boy. So, you know, meaning that I could have just let him go right now. He didn't do anything wrong. Agrippa saw it. But we do notice that he never did answer if he believed in the resurrection. He didn't understand. And, and if he did answer those questions, could he still be king of the Jews? Because he couldn't just become a Christian. And so he rejected Jesus. He didn't believe in him. Paul couldn't convince him to be. I mean, There's some other things, too. I mean, he's living with his sister in marriage. There's other external forces, right? He could no longer be king of the Jews. He could no longer be married to his sister. He has worldly reasons. But Paul hopes that everyone would turn and repent and hear what Paul is saying. Everyone is that the forgiveness of everyone comes from God. And he said that he used these words chain figur figuratively because he probably wasn't bound at this point because a Roman citizen 
it was not allowed to be chained, but he hoped everyone could be freed by the words of God. And, it, you know, it, they said they might have set him free, but Fe- Felix didn't set him free and Festus didn't set him free. And we don't know for sure that Agrippa would have set him free, but he did appeal to Caesar. But what's the reason behind that? Was not the freedom of Paul. The reason that we need Paul to go to Rome is he's going to appeal to a whole new group of people and be sent to Rome as a prisoner. Sad for Paul, but great for the message of God. And I think Paul was probably willing to take that chance. What I'm going to meditate on is thoughtful Paul is when he speaks. He's not being rude to people. He is appealing to them. He is talking like Jesus did, the right way to the right people. He knew words to say. He was very good with his words, and he explained what was going on. But he didn't just use his time to try to get out of whatever was holding him as prisoner. He used his time because he knew he was talking to two of the most important people he had ever talked to. He used his time wisely. And what I'd pray about is that I would have better words. (laughs) I like to think of myself as a talker, but boy, Paul, he knew how to say things and he knew the right things to say where he could not only tell his story, sometimes he told the story of the whole Jewish people, but then also bring it forward and saying, what this means for you, what this means for you is that I hope everybody hears it and repents and turns to God for a life that is never going to be extinguished by death, but instead be resurrected. And what I'm going to tell other people is that the best messages come from the heart. You know, Paul being educated, knowing what to say, knowing what to say when he was on Mars Hill, knowing what to say when he's standing here before Agrippa or or Felix or anyone, he has that thing down. And I guess I would encourage other people to know how to speak to people. I think that's one of the most important skills we can have. Right now, I see so much yelling at each other. We don't listen to each other. We don't convince each other. But Paul, he had it right. And I would love to share with other people that Learning how to speak to people in a way that catches their attention, tells a story that you want to tell about God, that's an important skill. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to subscribe and tell a friend. I hope this podcast is good for you. And if you could tell other people about it, I'd sure appreciate it. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.